Once again, Memorial Day brings severe weather to Central Texas. On Tuesday, May 27th, a severe thunderstorm moved through Williamson and Travis counties, spawning several deadly tornadoes. The hardest hit area was Gerald, north of Georgetown, with more than two dozen people killed. The Cedar Park area was hit very hard also, destroying several homes and knocking out power to the whole area. PEC crews were out in force even before the storm was over, trying to restore power. Another tornado hit the Lake Travis area and moved toward Highway 71 West, cutting a path of destruction as it went. Well, I came around the bend down the road here, and there was leaves coming out of the sky. And as I approached the church, it's turned into branches, and then it turned into limbs coming down. It's just falling out of the sky, and I realized there must be a tornado near me. So I pulled off into that grassy spot, oh, maybe 50 yards away from where I crossed the road. I just pulled in and sat there, and I watched two cars right here. They just got picked up and thrown in these treetops over here. The trees are gone now. And I just sat there and watched them. My car was shaking back and forth. Limbs are coming down. A bloody bird hit my windshield. It was just an unbelievable, unbelievable. It just came right on through here. I watched it cross the road. It came right over here and went right off over that horizon right there. The scariest thing I've ever seen. That same twister hit one of LCRA's transmission towers near Lake Travis, turning it into a heap of twisted metal. Power was routed around the problem, and LCRA transmission crews were starting the repair process the next morning. Overall, LCRA's electric system sustained little damage considering the severity of the storms. The Fayette Power Project has just completed the overhaul of two units and completely changed their control systems. And now they're getting ready for the Sheriff's Department going on there. I hear sirens coming around the corner. Check this out, man. Check out the fire engine here. What's going on? What's going on? We got Sheriff's Department. We got Fire Hello. trucks. Let's go inside and see if we can find out what's going on. Okay, let's go. All right. Okay, let's get out of here. Just a few weeks ago, as we were recording material for a story at the Fayette Power Project, we were interrupted by what appeared to be a serious accident at the plant. Just after a dozen emergency vehicles raced by, the front gate was sealed off to all visitors. Security personnel even okay. made it difficult to get our cameras inside. Okay. Yeah, he did. Give me permission. Okay. Where are we going? Unit 2. Unit 2. Great. Let's go down there. Okay, good. Thanks. But we persisted. We're in. When we pulled alongside the maintenance building, there were a number of bodies lying on the ground, and people were confused and asking for help. We're inside the break room, and, and it shattered the window, and uh, glass went everywhere. EMS personnel from LaGrange and Fayette County, as well as EMTs from the plant, tried hard to attend to the injured. Meanwhile, the normally quiet community of LaGrange was in shock as many people who have radio scanners heard the call for help and were left to wonder if their loved ones were safe. Despite our efforts to learn exactly what happened, we were all but arrested by plant personnel and shuttled off to a conference room where we were told little. Yes, sir, there is, there is definitely something that has gone on in the plant. I have no confirmation as to what that is or as to if there are injured people or not. More than an hour into the disaster, plant manager Joe Bricker arrived on the scene to give us the first glimpse of the severity of the problem. Yeah, we're trying to get some information here on the scene about what's going on. We're not getting much help from the people here at LCR. In fact, we had the in fact there's the plant manager right there. Let's walk over this way and see if we can get something from him. Come on. Mr. Bricker? Hi, Richard Gaylord with TV out of Can we talk to you a second? Uh, no, sir. Come on. Is this the plant manager? Can we talk to you a second? We've been locked up with this the camera room down on, and I'm telling you one time. No Any other violation, you'll be going to jail. Thanks a lot. If he okays it, it's fine with me. Otherwise, you will go to jail. What happened here this morning? I'm not informed. I was off the plant site. I do know that there has been a minor explosion of some type here in some of our hydrogen control uh, equipment. We resulted with a small oil fire. There have been some injury out of it. We've had tremendous response from the area community fire departments and EMS. What I'm hearing is that everything's under control. 
Soon after that announcement, it was revealed that the entire emergency was a well-planned dramatization, from the fake chemical spill to broken legs and even a fatality. Were you taken care of? Did uh, people come to you and check you out? Yeah, I actually responded real quick. First ECAs arrived, uh, looked at me, read my little note on my shirt, and decided that uh, I was probably best left alone and move on to some more, you know, more critical individuals. The relief on people's faces was evident when the drill was over, and although the official debriefing will take some time, it was clear that the exercise provided valuable insight. Joe, they just given the all clear signal, and it's five, just a couple of minutes after this very realistic uh, drill. How do you feel about the response? Very, very good. It's with mixed emotions that we even went into this drill, I'll tell you for sure, because we're sitting here with a tremendous workforce who have just come out of outages. Everyone's ready for a little relaxing time, if you will. And to have a drill like this come about and, and everyone's adrenaline pumped to the extreme was a hard thing for us to commit to and go forward with. You know, it couldn't have happened at a worse time, but that's when, they, when these things do occur. We had folks in our 345 high voltage switch yard taking clearances on a piece of equipment that we'd had problems with earlier and we couldn't go tell them. We had our control center responding to that kind of a situation of hearing over the uh, uh, scanners and over the uh, emergency communication systems that there had been an explosion at Fayette Power Project. I was at the uh, local radio station and even knowing what was happening, was standing there when the scanner began going off and had to tell him, now please, we need your cooperation in not communicating this out. We didn't want to make the uh, communication worse people in school and community leaders and all. It's, it's a good feeling to be at this point, to know it's over, to know that things went very well. And that's the real reason for doing these, is to see that we are prepared to save lives. Immediately following the drill, Joe Bricker held an impromptu meeting with all personnel and explained why the drill was necessary, despite the anxiety it placed on employees and their families. Bubba Rees was the overall coordinator of the drill. He says in general, plant personnel and the community agencies did a good job handling the emergency. And he said one of the toughest jobs was keeping it all a secret. Uh, there was a real tight inner circle of uh, folks that uh, uh, we've been working on this um, drill for about the last three months. And um, we uh, swore that uh, on our, our blood oath that we wouldn't tell. And so that's how it's done. There are more than 200 employees at the plant on most days, and it is definitely good to know that should a disaster occur, that they, as well as nearby emergency crews, are prepared to deal with it quickly and professionally. The official photograph of the new LCRA Board of Directors was taken at the May meeting. Six new members were present for their first board meeting since being confirmed by the Texas Senate in April. The new members are John Widener from Brown County. He's the Electric Service Area member. Gay Gaddis from Austin represents Travis County. Gail Linky represents Fayette County. Arthur Milberger is the new member from Matagorda County. Pamela Akins is the at-large statutory member from Burnett County. And Patricia Kirk is the new board member from San Saba County. Welcome aboard. The 75th legislative session ended at the state capitol on June 2nd. General Manager Mark Rose took time recently to talk to us about how new legislation will affect the LCRA. This has been <clears throat> a significant uh, session in that water legislation, fundamental water legislation has been considered, deregulation of electric utilities has been considered, uh, the tax structure of the state of Texas has been considered, and then we've had uh, individual pieces of legislation that could affect the LCRA be considered. Um, and we've been challenged, uh, to be honest. Uh, but what is really neat to me is the tremendous amount of support that has, that has surfaced for the LCRA. We, I mean, we could have loaded up the buses and to bring folks down wanting to talk about LCRA. Um, we didn't do that because it, it, wasn't, it wasn't required. But we had county judges and elected officials uh, going to uh, the House Natural Resources Committee, calling me, asking me if they could come testify, uh, and then others uh, 
who just heard about it and, and were willing to testify. And their message, you know, their message was that, you know, look, we look at the Elsary for a lot more than just electricity. We had, we had two judges who testified, and the first thing they said is, we don't buy electricity from the LCRA. Uh, you know, we're from Wharton County and Matagorda County. We're not served by the LCRA. But they're making a, a, an important difference in our lives through what they do with the river and then what they're putting back in the community and economic development. You know, so for all the naysayers, and for all the folks who, who fall into the trap of saying, well, if we were just doing electricity, you know, we'd it'd be a little bit cheaper and we'd be a lot better off. That's just not really the truth. Uh, the fact of the matter is the, the grant program, the community development program, our presence in the community, the fact that we do more and care about more than just selling electricity has been the critical difference when you combine it with the fact that we are damn good at providing electricity and our costs are low. And so for me, seven years of work, you know, and I think it's paid off. And I, and I would hope every individual employee feels that uh, personal sense of accomplishment. This really does work. This really is a package deal and it really does work. House Bill 162 passed. I guess it actually ended up being a Senate bill in the end. That's the bill that allows us to provide water and wastewater services to Williamson County. Important piece of legislation for us. Uh, tremendous market for us. Uh, we're all better off uh, with our being able to provide more water and wastewater services. That piece of legislation passed. House Bill 741, the uh, bill by Representative Moffitt to sell the LCRA, did not pass. It gave us an opportunity to tell our story. I don't think the story that was told about us uh, was fair and I don't, or accurate, but it didn't stick. And uh, so we'll just leave it at that. Uh, we, we've done a good job. We have a good story to tell. It's like Governor Bullock told me in one time in the process. He said, you know, Mark, Elsery has a good reputation because you've done a good job and everybody knows it. Uh, and I think that's the way this session ends for us. Uh, we have done a good job, and we do have a lot to be proud of, and we can be successful in a deregulated world, uh, and it isn't the end of the world for us, and so we just need to approach it from, a, from a, the perspective of, hey, how do we make this a win? How do we be positive? One thing is really clear to me, and I'll close on this note. As we've gone through this session, and we've looked at the fundamental issues of water in this state, the fundamental issues of electric deregulation, what Governor Bullock said is true. We do have a good reputation. We do work hard. We are service oriented and it is paying dividends, a dividend for us. We have the ability to control our destiny and, and we should do that. And we're good at what we do. We're a good electric utility and we're a good water provider. Some people view us as uh, maybe being a little too big for our britches. So some people are intimidated by that. Some people are simply jealous of that. Uh, and I try personally not to focus on that much. But the fact remains, uh, we're good at what we do. And we need to show that not as a form of ego, but just as, a, as, a, as pride. Pride in our own self-worth and pride in the overall worth of this organization. It, it proved to be the difference in this session, and we ought to have the goal of making it be the difference every year that we work here as employees of the LCRA. The summer boating season is here again as thousands of people head out to Texas lakes and rivers. But all too often, a fun outing can turn tragic. Last year, there were 37 boating-related fatalities in Texas. The year before, there were 66. This reduction in deaths, say state officials, is due in part to a boater education and safety campaign started last year called Don't Be a Pain in the Boat. This is a partnership. It's a partnership that has two objectives where boating safety is concerned. First, to enforce the law, and, and, and it is a zero-tolerance approach. We will not tolerate uh, uh, bad behavior on our lakes, but it's also an educational partnership. 
And one of the key partners in this part of the state has been the Lower Colorado River Authority who has helped us finance and, and conduct one of the broadest public awareness programs that's ever been conducted in the state. And during the recent legislative session, Texas lawmakers passed the 1997 Water Safety Act, which will greatly strengthen both enforcement and education efforts. For the first time in Texas history, we're going to begin training young boaters. Any, anyone born after September 1st of 1984 is going to have to have taken this boater safety course. Uh, another very important part of the legislation is that, uh, as you may know, there are a lot of different law enforcement entities out there enforcing water safety laws. Uh, the Sheriff's Department, uh, LCRA, Parks and Wildlife, and municipalities. And under this legislation, they will all be reporting on the same form, and anyone that is enforcing water safety laws will be certified as a marine safety officer. The LCRA has also beefed up its boating regulations on Lake Travis. Last year, the LCRA set a night speed restriction of 20 miles an hour for boats operating on Lake Travis. Boaters need to remember that this ordinance is still in effect. In addition to safety concerns, certainly courteous boating has been addressed in our new LCRA ordinance. Watercraft on Lake Travis equipped with optional exhaust noise suppression devices must use them in no wake areas. Boating safety classes are available through the LCRA, Texas Parks and Wildlife, and the Coast Guard Auxiliary. Experts say there are three critical rules which will save lives on the water. Don't boat while intoxicated, wear your life jacket, and take special care on personal watercraft like jet skis. LCRA board members and staff gathered together with lake residents recently at Inks Lake State Park to kick off the expansion of LCRA's Lake Watch program to Lakes Inks and Buchanan. Lake Watch, which is modeled after the very successful Neighborhood Watch program, is a team effort between law enforcement, lake residents, and lake users, and it's aimed at preventing crime. It gets people organized on, on both sides, the boaters as well as the residents, to be able to identify and then how to properly report so that the law enforcement can properly react to. Lake Watch was started on Lake Travis in 1995 and has 1,800 members there today and 2,000 members on Lake LBJ. Lake Watch groups provide a valuable service to each other as well as law enforcement agencies. It's been well received, a wonderful reception from all the surrounding uh, lake communities. It's going to be done on a community by community basis around the lake, but to bring the, the lake uh, area together where they all can participate in this watch community and uh, how they can report any particular incidents that might occur on, on their lake. If you would like more information about the LCRA Lake Watch program, call Les Witcher at 1-800-776-5272, extension 3286. In 1992, the LCRA started a pilot program to collect household hazardous waste in communities within the service area. This collection day in Bastrop County is the 11th such event and the first multiple site collection ever held. Collection areas were set up in Bastrop, Smithville, and Elgin to make it more convenient for citizens to bring their materials in for recycling and proper disposal. You can also see that we have uh, LCRA employees uh, manning these facilities here. Uh, our employees take great pride in their community efforts, their community spirit. They want to give back to the to the area that they live in. So we're, we're very pleased to be able to do this and, and hope it's a success for, for the counties, uh, the cities, and also for LCRA. I've got a bunch of uh, old tires on my property that people have dumped there. You know, so I've got some highway property and uh, I haven't been able to dispose of them until now, until the LCRA opened up this dump site here. Which uh, gave me a chance to get rid of them. You think, you think that's a, a good idea? Oh, I think it's an excellent idea. I wish they'd do it more often. Each vehicle that participates in these hazardous waste collections brings an average of 67 pounds of material. Everything from used motor oil, batteries, and tires to pesticides, herbicides, and paint. Well, this is an important program to us. It's, it's part of uh, our educational. Uh, 
outreach programs to make the public aware about proper uh, management and, and recycling and disposal of hazardous materials and, and about the conservation of our natural resources. Bastrop County Judge Peggy Wallachek visited all three sites on this Saturday morning and was pleased with what she saw. LCRA has always been very supportive of projects that the county is doing. Uh, the two have worked real good together. Uh, personally, I think one of the best things about LCRA is their employees. Anytime there's an event, you find those employees volunteering. Uh, they work the fundraising for this event and just did a tremendous job. Special plaques were presented to all of the many sponsors of this event, including the Friends of the Colorado River Foundation, Sim Gideon Power Plant, Hilby Gas Storage Facility, Smithfield Rail Car, and Camp Swift Wastewater Treatment Facility. When the LCRA built Sim Gideon Power Plant in Bastrop back in the 1960s, and FPP in Fayette County in the 70s, the cooling lakes created an ideal setting for public parks. Oak Thicket Park and Park Prairie on Lake Fayette and South Shore Park on Lake Bastrop have recently undergone a complete overhaul and upgrade and were rededicated in ceremonies held in May. Today we're here though to dedicate uh, two really fabulous parks. The first time I saw this they weren't quite complete and I was ooing up ooing and eyeing already and when I drove up today the finishing touches are on and I think we're all very impressed. Lake Fayette is one of the best bass fishing lakes in Texas and these parks are now first class facilities for fishermen, family camping and group activities as well. It will be tremendously beneficial to uh, Fayette County and not only to the county but to, to the individuals that are living out in the in the areas here that have businesses and that sort of stuff. It'll bring tourism in. It'll just bring a, a lot of people into the county on weekends and, and during the week. So, you know, we're real happy with this project, not only the, for that sake, but we're happy with the fact that it was done so nicely. Uh, the area back there, the campsites are just wonderful. Over at the South Shore Park on Lake Bastrop, fishing is also great. And the park itself is now a showplace facility thanks to the partnership between the LCRA and Texas Parks and Wildlife Department. But it's a relationship that has paid enormous dividends to the people who live up and down the Colorado River. And this project today is, a, is another great example of what we and LCRA have begun to, have to do together. And I hope that it is an example of projects that will continue. The park system on the Colorado River has come a long way in the last few years. And I was shocked in 1987 when I was going through the first budget process and was told that from literally from Austin to the Gulf Coast, from Austin to the Gulf Coast, the LCRA did not own a single acre or inch for that matter of land. And there was absolutely no public access on the Colorado River from Austin to the Gulf Coast, none. And I cannot tell you how proud I am to stand here and tell you today that we now have helped through Parks and Wildlife and the local communities build a park in Wharton, in Columbus, in LaGrange, in Smithville, the Riverwalk project here in Bastrop. We've acquired the McKinney Acres track and we have over 30 canoe access points on the Colorado River. And we've done all that in between 1988 and today. And that's something that we can really all be immensely proud of. You can get to the Colorado River today without trespassing. And if you want to, you can enjoy it. And you have places that you can go. This month on Around the LCRA, we're here on the banks of the Colorado River in Columbus, Texas where all of the students at Columbus Junior High School are participating in a very special event called River Day. <laughs> Principal Randy Hoyer came up with the idea of River Day to help students relate to the environment and realize how important the Colorado River is to the entire community. 
the students have been preparing for this for several weeks. Uh, this is not just something that today they showed up to school and we're doing this. Each individual discipline in the campus for about the last two weeks has been studying and building on today's activities so that when the students actually got to see some of these things, they already had some prior knowledge. And LCRA was extremely beneficial in providing us with a lot of the resources that we needed to make today very successful. 280 7th and 8th graders participated in the special event, which featured exhibits of animals and plants common in the river, artifacts found in the river basin. There were also river stories and river music, fish prints, and over at Beeson's Park on the banks of the Colorado, students could get hands-on performing water quality tests, learning how to clean fish, using a stereo microscope to examine river specimens. They could also attend water safety demonstrations by local game wardens and learn how to identify plants on the nature trail. River Day is a day set aside to learn the history of our river and different facts about our river and just to enjoy what we have. I think it's really important because it has a lot to do with our town and how it was developed and everything that our town is. Students, teachers, and volunteers seem to really enjoy this special day. In the June edition of the LCRA News, read more about the disaster drill at FPP. Find out how next year's budget is coming together and see how changing weather patterns have such a tremendous effect on LCRA's irrigation districts. Well, that's it for this edition of Wavelength. We'll look forward to seeing you again next month.